Hello and welcome to Real Hi-Fi Help. Let me tell you about how we sometimes find hidden gems in the hi-fi market. So one of my friends had a funny thing happening to him the other day. It's kind of a thing that I also have myself experienced a couple of times that makes a really good deal drop into your lap once in a while when you don't expect it. So he got a very good deal on some Nordost Valhalla silver cable and he got it for like a fraction of the normal use price and it was almost too good to be true. But that that's kind of the reason why he got it um <clears throat> because the guy had um stripped the cable and uh, actually put it into his uh, preamplifier and and somehow he got a very bad experience from from doing that and the guy kind of gave up and then decided to sell this um what do you call it stripped slaughtered cable <laughs> whatever you call it um, because, um, yeah, he, he stripped it. Um, he couldn't get a lot of money for it. Um, and he didn't have a receipt, uh, and yada, yada, yada. I think he was like a third owner or something like that. But then my friend took a chance and, and, and bought it. And, and sometimes when you do that, sometimes you can, you can end up, you know, buying uh, uh, something that's really bad you know when where somebody has possibly cheated you um <clears throat> so so he took a bit of a chance buying this and i just want to say that statistically speaking putting one of the most revealing silver cables in a preamp that is on a short run uh cable wise is not a very good idea and I just want to say that these are some of the few examples that, that exist in the hi-fi world where um, some people buy a thing, they totally miss out on it simply because they don't use it in a proper way. And um, that actually uh, happens once in a while. I, I've experienced it at least... Um, five to ten times throughout the the circa 20 years i've been looking at, at stuff from from the used market so it it kind of tells you that there are some few hidden gems on the market and uh, i also did that with this with with um, i remember selling a, a, a tube google amp to a guy and it was it was something that you usually pay ten to twenty five thousand u s dollars for that type of sound, but um he couldn't get it to work. he couldn't match it with a proper speaker. He didn't control the power, his cables, and a lot of stuff like that. He had basically fifty different brands audio brands of of cables and all kinds of weird and cheap c d players and he even had some 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 DAC, some Rhea, and and all kinds of stuff like that, and it just goes to show you that someone could be sitting on what's a really good piece of gear, but they never realize it because they just don't test it in in a proper way. You know, just just having a, a you can even have a really good speaker that you put it on, but it just has the wrong ohm load that you just completely miss out on the sound so you only get like a third of the sound so um <clears throat> he actually put this thing up for sale and because he couldn't sell it immediately he wanted to get some other gear he and he ended up selling it for like 1300 us dollars which is crazy cheap i mean and and this is just because this is a brand that isn't well established. It doesn't have a, a huge uh, history. Not a lot of people ha have tried it. it. It isn't, there aren't a lot of reviews of it. So again, another example of just, you know, that guy who bought it ended up getting a really good deal. You know, I almost wanted to buy it back uh, from selling uh, my amplifier to him because if I had known that he would only sell it for this amount of money that I only found out later, 
I probably would have bought it back because I just think it's it's a pity to to do such a thing. I mean, it had some very seldom tubes that you get from some kind of a I don't know World War Two submarine or something like that. Uh, they were crazy expensive. I paid a lot of money for that, but um, I just wanted to tell you guys about these these few situations that occur when people just don't really communicate properly with the product that they're selling also this third example here where um i've tried it several times over at least 15 years where i turn up the last five to ten minutes before closing time and everybody's going home they're kind of pissed and like oh we didn't get anything and they're pl and they're throwing like you know exercise equipment <laughs> into containers you know and you can basically almost get it for free at that point you know uh, you just gotta get get up with your um, trailer and, and and put it on the trailer quickly before they they throw it all out. That's also another way of of getting really good deals. Sometimes you know I mean you won't get the newest stuff, but so if if you've got the patience to hang around and have that type of lifestyle and go around looking for these certain type of flea markets that do this because it's very different from flea market to flea market. I'm just saying that you could potentially um, also get a lot of good deals doing that. I did that for many years. And um, there's, there, there's another example here um, where there are some few people in society that aren't tuned in to the standard of how things are many times because they're just old. They, they can't use the internet. They don't know what the market uh, is like, what the prices are like. Um, they just don't know enough and they're kind of, you know, getting out of this whole hi-fi thing. I've tried that a couple of times and then ending up getting some pretty good gear once in a while. You know, I can imagine that in, in the U.S., and in Canada, there might be like a handful of those people, at least, that probably have like an old vintage uh, Macintosh amplifier that they just end up, you know, you know, putting out on the flea market because they, they, they just think it's, it, it's, it's normal crap. They don't know enough about it. Their husband died or whatever. And they're just giving it almost like, you know, away uh, to for free to a flea market you know and then some guy on a flea market sees this and probably gets it for like a 50 or 100 bucks when in fact it's worth several thousand bucks you know that that stuff also happens once in a while but um yeah i just wanted to share these uh stories with you guys because i've experienced them uh, quite a bit of times so um that's me logging off like and subscribe if you can bye